itself, if not an organized ecosystem, can actually come back to life, as it were, after a cataclysmic event. Ken's story studies the survival of animal life in extreme conditions. The last time a comet hit, the life clock did start. Not for everyone. Many species were wiped out. The total biomass on the Earth decreased tremendously. Some species were losers, and that's what we focus on, but some species were winners. They were winners because they survived, like turtles and crocodiles, but the real win was after they survived, there were no competitors. In this world, is anyone a winner? One survivor has his corner to himself, no competitors, but no friends either. He must fend for himself. The pungent smell of sulfur hangs in the air. The ground radiates heat. on Earth for Fernando. <laughs> Bam, big rock hits the Earth and it transforms a vast quantity of matter into a vapor. And it'll be as dark as a moonless night. Days after a comet slams into Earth, a giant dust cloud turns day to night. With the power out, survivors reach back to the Stone Age for light. Some have lost their minds. Henri has lost his wife. Have you seen this woman? She, no. She's wearing a white jacket. I, I haven't seen nobody, no, no. Among survivors, chaos gives way to eerie calm. Their stocks of food will soon run out. But when will the sun return? Bam, big rock hits the earth and it, and it transforms a vast quantity of, of matter at the surface of the earth essentially into a vapor. Matthew Huber studies warm climate periods in the earth's distant past. His work draws on atmosphere ocean dynamics, paleo-oceanography, and computer modeling. There's a mingling of the mass of the original impactor and plus all of the surface that it vaporized. And that gets pumped up high into the atmosphere, through the troposphere, into the stratosphere, where that rock starts to condense out and, and form a solid, and it forms a, a massive layer of dust. Most of the dust will actually be high up in the atmosphere, well above where you and I might be but it'll be very dark. Most of the sunlight will, will not make it to the surface and it'll be as dark as a moonless night. After leaving the observatory, scientists Xiang Yatan and Noah Boyle struggle across a no man's land. Thousands of miles from the comet impact, Hawaii lay out of range of the scorching fireball. But now, paradise succumbs to a different disaster, eternal night. Still more fallout, acid rain, produced by sulfuric compounds dispersed into the atmosphere when the comet hit. These plants aren't going to make it without sunlight. pH value, 4.2. Sour milk has a pH value of about 4.2, not lethal, 
yet the same level of atmospheric acidity can slowly leach heavy metals from the soil. Result? Slow lead poisoning. We shouldn't drink this much longer. We shouldn't stay on this island much longer. Darkness turns the fertile island into a hostile desert. Our indispensable fuel is sunlight. Few plants can live without light. Within weeks of darkness, the first link in the food chain is broken. You all know what these are. They're plain, everyday potatoes. And I just want to show you what happens to seeds or tubers like this when they germinate in the ground. Dr. Vida studies mass extinction events throughout Earth's history. They thrive to break through the surface to reach the sunlight. But what happens when the sun is no longer shining? Even in darkness, seeds will germinate. In their desperate search for light, the sprouts shoot up. So fast, they deplete their precious reserves of energy. When they only find total darkness, they will keep on growing as pale sprouts. For some time after the impact, the ground will be covered by white sprouts and uh, from all kinds of plants. Like potatoes in the lab, they exhaust their reserves and die. of survivors has quickly adapted. The Baca gather everything edible, animal and vegetable. Meat is preserved for the unknown days ahead. In the twilight of disaster, the living grope to survive. After waiting days for the ground to cool, Fernando resumes his odyssey to find his family. The landscape is bewildering. No signs whether he's moving closer to ruin or away. Calm down. The dogs aren't just his sole companions, they're his life support. The comet has created ideal sledding terrain. For hundreds of miles, a carpet of microtectites, glass pellets of hardened molten rock. You can run, but where will you go? For some time after the impact, the fungi ruled the earth. After searching for days, Noah and Xiang at last find other survivors. Have you seen his ham? Hey there! Don't be afraid! Your ham! Let me take a look! Noah! I can help you! Noah, come back! Natural disasters can threaten our sense of control, predictability, safety, and trust. Dr. Sattler studies the psychological effects of hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. 
It's so important that we're able to predict what's going to happen to our lives, that we have a daily routine. We all have habits, things that we, we know happen day to day, what time we wake up and what time we'll go to bed. We know that we can count on a stable supply of food. We know that we can trust that certain supplies will be there at the grocery store. And natural disasters shake our world. It's people who can think flexibly, who can adapt to the new situation and the new challenges. It's people who uh, have a sense of optimism and are able to cope in a way that looks at a problem and says, how can we solve this problem? Problem, getting off the island. Solution, build a raft. It's their only hope to rejoin humanity. The comet changed the world's climate. The island is already evolving. Look at this. It's beautiful. Yeah, and poisonous. It's a type of mushroom he's never seen. Sign of a new era. In perpetual twilight, fungi thrive. The new dominant species. It's happened before. So here we see the KT boundary of New Zealand and uh, the results from our study shows that below the boundary you find uh, pollen and spores from 100 different plants. The KT boundary marks the abrupt end of an era 65 million years ago. The cause? A meteor impact. As soon as you get to the boundary layer, I find only fungal spores for about four millimeters. You can imagine a scenario with fallen logs, dead animals and plants, mm -hmm. and on top of this, fungi was growing, and the reason is that they are not photosynthetic. They don't need sunlight to grow. So for some time after the impact, the fungi rule the earth. Plants need light to live, but not fungi. They thrive by breaking down dead organic material, the remains of living organisms. The decomposition carried out by fungi is vital. It returns nutrients to the soil and makes it fertile. The fungi's heyday is brief, cut short by the comet's next after effects. Persistent darkness causes the earth to cool. It's only September, yet in Europe, temperatures plunge below freezing. A winter without spring begins. With a few other survivors, Henri and his daughter Michelle take shelter in an abandoned farmhouse. Little food, constant fear, and the cold numbs everything except nerves. Why are you messing with this radio, Dad? I'm starving, and we're almost out of firewood. Listen, 